Let me introduce you to the world of the unseen majority, the world of microbes. These tiny single-celled organisms are everywhere. A square centimetre on the back of my hand will have around 10,000 bacteria on it, whether I've washed my hands or not. This is no cause for alarm. These are not germs. That's a popular term associated with disease-causing microbes. Many of these microbes are actually beneficial to skin health. The rest are entirely neutral in that there's neither harm nor benefit from their presence. Now let me introduce you to the concept of the uncultured anomaly. It's a known fact that 99% of the world's microbes, including many of those living on the back of my hand, have never been cultured. That is, they've never been grown successfully in a laboratory, so scientists simply don't know anything about them. Why, you might ask? Well, there are several reasons. Some microbes need very special nutrients for growth. Others even need the presence of other microbes before they can grow. So if we can't grow them, how do we access them? And we do need to access them in order to understand what they are, what they do, and to exploit their properties and products of biotechnology. The answer is genomics, the science of using an organism's DNA to understand more about it. Let me remind you, every cell of every organism contains DNA, that famous double helix that makes up the genome which encodes all the information necessary to specify the structure and function of that organism. It's my DNA, my genome, which dictates that as I grow older, I look more like my father and less like Robert Redford. We can now access the information in DNA using a set of sophisticated techniques that are broadly termed DNA sequencing. And that brings me to the genomic revolution. DNA sequencing technology is right at the heart of the genomic revolution. Over the past 15 years, new machines, new sequencing chemistries have completely revolutionized genomics and made it even more accessible than ever. There's a well-known graph that shows the enormous impact of new DNA sequencing technologies in little more than one and a half decades. To demonstrate how dramatic that has been, let me tell you that in 2001, the cost of sequencing the human genome was roughly 100 million US dollars. Today, the sequencing cost is less than 1,000 US dollars, and that's a 100,000 fold reduction. DNA sequencing is therefore one of the very few things in this world that's become cheaper over the last decade. So how are we using this new and increasingly cheap genomics technology? For my first example, I must take you to one of the most extreme environments on Earth. This is the world's coldest desert, the McMurdo Dry Valleys of Eastern Antarctica. Conditions here are extreme. In winter, the temperatures may be below minus 40 degrees centigrade for long periods. The blizzards are severe, there are many months without sunlight, and there's little or no liquid water for most of the year. Not a good place for life, you might think. Indeed, as recently as the 1970s, some scientists claimed these polar deserts were completely lifeless. But much more recent studies using modern DNA sequencing and genomic technologies have shown just the opposite. We have shown that the extreme environment of the Antarctic deserts actually supports a huge diversity of microbes that perform all sorts of important functions. In a more heavyweight version of genomics, we're now beginning to simultaneously sequence the genomes of all the microbes at the same time, a technique called metagenomics. This can rapidly give us information about the composition and function of very complex groups or communities of microbes in all sorts of environments. Here's another example of the power of metagenomics. In the last few years, we've come to realize that cells can live comfortably inside other cells. The best known example is in plants, where microbes called endophytes live quite comfortably inside plant tissues. Most of these microbes are not culturable and have only become visible using genomics methods, that is by sequencing their DNA. Interestingly, endophytes are not pathogens and they're not just passengers. There's plenty of evidence that they play very important roles in protecting the plant, promoting plant growth and productivity, and increasing stress resistance. In other words, genomics has given us new insights into the direct importance of microbes in agricultural production, meaning that the microbes themselves have real economic importance. Let's take another example, this time from the seashore, the simple sponge. Sponges are a hugely diverse group of marine organisms, always fascinating because of their unique shapes 
and magnificent colours. What is equally remarkable is that sponge tissues are a very rich source of unusual microbes, most of which are completely unculturable and have only been identified using genomics. Interestingly, sponge bacteria are very important to the biotechnology and pharmaceutical industries. These microbes produce a huge array of unusual chemicals, some of which are already being developed as therapeutics. This very complex molecule, synthesized by a single sponge bacterium, is already being used as a chemotherapeutic drug for the treatment of advanced breast cancer. It is also possible to use genomics to find the biochemical pathways involved in the synthesis of this drug, and it's environmentally much more friendly to make it in the lab than to harvest tons of live sponges. So let's summarize. What has the genomics revolution done for us? It has allowed us to better understand the world around us, particularly the unseen microscopic portion. So we now know so much more about the importance of microbes, those unseen heroes in critical environmental processes, such as removing CO2 from the atmosphere, removing environmental pollutants, such as oil spills, in nutrient cycling and soil fertility, and so much more. It's allowed us to begin to understand how ecosystems actually function, and particularly how they might respond to change, and that is very important in a world of climate change. It's allowed us to get easy access to the genomes of a huge array of novel organisms from which we can access new bioactive compounds, such as antibiotics against drug-resistant bacteria. The genomics revolution is not over. DNA sequencing technologies will continue to get faster, and we hope cheaper. New opportunities for genomics analysis will continue to appear. I am quite prepared to predict that genomics will lead us into new areas of health, agriculture and environmental protection that we've not even begun to imagine. Welcome to the new genomics revolution.